uh, old faces as well as new faces. Uh, um, today we're going to finish reading through uh, the book of Romans, and we're going to come to one of the most uh, transcendent passages in the New Testament. So Rita's going to read that for us, and I'm sure we'll enjoy listening to these golden words and then thinking how they apply to our lives. Would you like to stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. So we're going to sing uh, at home, or listen to the choir here in church, and we're going to sing, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry 
and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to sit down and we're going to listen to our Bible reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart and knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. <clears throat> we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. <clears throat> no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Please, would you stand? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. As he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owned him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat. He said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you like to sit down? Heavenly Father, speak to us from your written word now about your living word. And help your word bring new life to us. Amen. I wonder if you have been watching the TV program called The Diagnosis Detectives. Uh, the, the setup basically is they bring uh, to a panel of uh, specialist doctors uh, cases, people who have been... Uh, struggling with ill health for a long year and all the other doctors have been stumped. And so these team of specialists try and figure out together. And what's uh, lovely about it, of course, is they only show you the success stories, um, is that uh, people are lifted out of despair by the help they are given. And uh, the, the couple this week, the two people this week, Neither of them had a kind of take this pill and you'll be better tomorrow solution. Far from it. Uh, but they were given a sense of people understand. They can put a name on my condition and we can see that it may be a long way, but I'm not stuck here. I think it's, I think it's they were in the doldrums, so to speak. Just going round and round, being passed from one person to another and no sense of where they were going in life. Uh, last week I sent out a survey. We've had over 60 responses back and I'm not presenting a final result of it by any means. But uh, one of the questions was, uh, can you give me three words that describe how you feel just now? And it is true that some people are hopeful and happy and positive, but one reads it through and again and again with the words like, I'm worried, anxious, fearful, tired, weary, sad, resigned, stressed, 
uncertain. And they may be speaking about their own life, their own individual circumstances, or the wider malaise in society. Uh, it sounds to me that they're in the diagnosis dilemma, d- doldrums. Where are we going? Because without wishing to be too kind of grandstanding, I think we've seen a collapse of some fundamental assumptions our society has taken for granted. I think we've taught ourselves that science is the answer. And yet we've learned that science cannot be absolutely certain about some things. And even though there's talk about vaccines, it can't be done overnight. Science isn't able to turn on the solution, like switching on a light or turning on a tap. I think we are learning that uh, the myth of inevitable progress is a false myth. I think I remember talking at Christmas about Whig history, but that's another story. But this sense of it will get better. Or if you buy into the American dream, I can do anything. You remember New Labour had that pop song, it can only get better. And yet we are saying the new normal won't be like before. And that's before we get into the downsizing, constraining we will need to do on our lifestyle when we go back to thinking about climate change. And thirdly, I think our society, interestingly, has learnt that when push comes to shove, we share the value of every human life. The hard materialists would say, well, we should let the older people die. It's just a matter of time for them. Life is for the young people. Let them build up herd immunity. But the world has said that's not true. Every life counts. We must save anyone we can save. So we have struggled, I think, to say, well, where are we going? And so inevitably people feel confused, going round in circles, frustrated. Christianity has a big picture. And our confusion in 2020 is just one little moment of a wider, bigger perspective. Last week, Sylvie spoke about the earlier part of Romans chapter 8, where we heard that creation will be set free. God is at work changing. We also heard about the coming freedom of the glory of the children of God. God is remaking the world here and now and will intervene in the future definitively, demonstrably, and for all time. That's the biggest picture of all. We're not simply a planet careering through space, but the whole cosmos has a purpose. And this week's readings focus a bit more on the, that human strand. Foreknown, predestined, called, justified, glorified. This chain of one thing after another that God is doing with us. So Paul wants us to take hold of this idea that the future is certain. I was going to demonstrate this, but somewhere along the line I've lost my rope. I was going to, I was going to tie a rope around the lectern and show you that if the end is secure, we can do a lot of waving about, uh, but the end is secure, like a mountaineer would tie their rope with a piton into the rock face. Then they can swing and fall if necessary, but they will be held The future is certain, and that means we can live in uncertain times. And so, as Rita read to us, we have one of the most uh, embracing, affirming passages in the New Testament. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Not all things are good, but all things in God's way can be working together for good. Well, that's a ringing thing to, to bang on the table about. But that provokes the provokes question, really? Is that so? And Paul has to come back and defend his uh, ringing statement that all things work together for good for those who love God. And he asks a number of questions. 
And I'm going to just look very quickly at the answers. He says, God did not spare his son. And perhaps at the back of this little phrase is that story of Abraham, who was called to offer his son, but in the end didn't have to. But God the Father, in the end, did give his son. And Paul says, there is nothing that God would not do to save us. And then he talks about being accused and being justified, which is saying no matter what we do, how much of a screw-up we make of it today or last year or two years' time, God will put it right simply on the basis of faith. Our faith is what he's looking for, not our success. And then there's a little bit where it tells us about Jesus, who died, who rose, ascended, and now prays for us at the right hand of God. Do all things work together for good? Paul says, yes, they do, because it's Jesus' job to make it happen, even to the extent that he prays for us today in heaven. And if all that sounds like a, a project, things that have to be done to us, and our heart longs for something deeper, then let's go back to the story of the diagnosis detectives. Because, I suspect, they're very well-paid professional people, paid by the BBC to give time to these patients in a way that the NHS have bustled them about. That shows, that attention to detail, that compassion, that time, actually is healing for those people as well. And so we read that God is for us. Yes, he's on our case, we are his project, but also... Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And Paul has two long lists full of all terrible calamities that all happen to Paul. Whatever might happen, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not divorce or bereavement or mental ill health or disability or financial ruin or chronic illness. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He will love us in those times. And the second list is a whole long list of things that get in the way. Life and death. Time and space. And he goes through them all. As if these are other things that want to get in the way between us and God. But he comes back again and says, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Three things to take home very quickly. It's absolutely vital this Sunday morning when you hear these words to start a little project in your mind. You might be convinced by me this morning, I am not forgotten. I am deeply loved by God. He is for me. But what are you going to do now and in the days ahead so when it's harder to believe that, you will have convinced yourself, your future self. What are you putting in your kind of memory banks, your emotional tank, so that when it is harder to believe, to feel God, to appreciate his goodness, you'll go back to say, well, on the 14th, 13th of September, I began a little project. I put a sticker on my fridge. I wrote in my Bible. I memorized this verse. Whatever it is. What are you doing so that when times are harder, this absolute golden truth is embedded in your heart and mind? Then I think we need to learn to pray this verse in the sense that tough things happen. Paul gives us a list of tough things that happen to him. He doesn't say become a Christian and these tough things will never happen. What he does is he lists them out and perhaps dares us to think of more things and says, see that you pray that God is working in you to grow through these things. That whatever happens, these things work together for your good. Learn to pray. In this situation, Lord, not simply take it away from me, and we can pray that because Jesus prayed prayers like that, didn't he? But if you don't take it away, 
Help me grow through it. And then lastly, many of us are tired and weary and confused. All those things I read out, they're your words. That is our reality today. But as Christian people, we need to say, there is a bigger horizon than the next announcement from the government, my next appointment at the doctor, my next bill that I have to pay. There is a greater horizon. Paul would write in 2 Corinthians, so we do not lose heart, even though our nature, outer nature is wasting away, so our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would help us take deeper into our very being this truth. That we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Help us in this time and in this place to know what that means in our heart, in our daily life. And may, in some way, this sense of your hand upon our life communicate to the others around in this difficult time that we have something different, something that comes from you. But build us, each individually, in the things that we face today and tomorrow, as much as in 10 years' time. Help us to trust and to know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray, and Sylvie's going to lead our intercessions. This morning I'm going to uh, read the prayers slightly differently. Um, I've got a lot of normal prayers that are coming from the body of the church and there's the response after, Lord in your mercy, hear my prayer. But right at the end I'm going to read a prayer that was written by a prisoner in the prison where my husband works. And it comes from him, so they're his words. He talks about I as opposed to we. But I'm offering it to you to join in his prayer for yourself because I think that it does pick up what Derek was saying or one of the things that Derek was saying, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So this is a man who's written a prayer being in 22 hours of lockdown through that period. Um, and he's come up with a, a beautiful prayer that I think speaks to that. Everlasting God, Lord of compassion and gracious understanding, we come with an openness to express our concerns for the church and the world and to thank you for goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our world where misery and tragedy is brought about by wrong choices day by day. We pray for wisdom and compassion in all negotiations and decisions taken by our world and local leaders and ask that there be humility in leadership 
and responsibility for right action shared by all. And we particularly pray that this may apply to the things associated with, po with the pandemic and with climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help and guide our schools, colleges and universities as they return for a new educational year, especially with all their concerns about the coronavirus and how they are to cope with social distancing but still be with one another as community. May their teachers inspire a love of learning and kindle joy in all subjects and help our young people to grow into caring and knowledgeable adults. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we raise before you those from our church and community who are ill, hospitalised or recuperating, and for those we know within our own families and circle of friends. We particularly ask for your peace and healing presence to be with Mike Butterfield and Pat Futter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, give us ears to hear and minds to understand the message of immortality for the children of your kingdom, so that we may look forward with patience and confidence to that time when we will join in the peace of eternity. And we especially remember and pray for those who have recently died and are on that journey to you. We think of Ruth Gosling and the internment of ashes this afternoon and ask for your presence there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now I come to the prayer from the prisoner. He writes... Dear God, thank you that you love me and that you want the best for me in every situation. I am sorry for ignoring you and doing things in any way. I realise now that my sins have hurt you and the people, and for this I am truly sorry. Thank you that you came and took the punishment for my sins. Thank you that you gave your life for me, an eternal life in your kingdom where there will be no more suffering or pain. Please open the hearts and minds of all non-believers, including our family and friends, prisoners, staff that work at the prison, and everyone around the world, that they might come to know your saving grace and eternal love, and that they may repent and come into your loving family. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit each day so that I may learn to do your will. Thank you for everything that you have done for me and please help me in my weakness. Please forgive me now as I decide to live my life only for you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. first of all, to say that it's good to gather. Uh, if you're at home, then a reminder that after this uh, stream service at about 10.30, uh, gather on Zoom. Sandra will post the link in the chats on the Facebook Live uh, feed, uh, and I'll join you after a bit. Uh, if you're here in the church building, then we've put out some rings of chairs outside, um, you may want to go and sit there or you may want to stand and talk, but please move away from the church doors. There was a bit of a gathering last week. Um, we're not supposed to meet for social things, really. But um, uh, So just leave the church. If you're going home, then go home. That's f absolutely fine. You can join the Zoom as well if you like at half past ten. Or there are some chairs uh, in circles of six. Remember, although we're the day before the the rule of six comes into effect. Actually, it was six in this regard uh, previously. So we're in groups of six outside. 
so do stay on if you'd like to do that. Uh, this week we're beginning our midweek groups. Uh, that's Tuesday evening and Thursday afternoon, meeting once a fortnight. And we're going to be considering that classic of Christian writing, the screw tape letters. Uh, we'll read a, a chapter or two, or maybe three uh, each week, and then have a chat about it uh, in the Zoom. So there are links for the Zoom uh, sessions, either on the weekly email, or if you've lost the weekly email, then go to the church website, and Prill has a huge big link to the weekly email along the top there, and you click on that, and you can find the link for the Tuesday evening starting 8 o'clock, or the Thursday afternoon starting at 3 o'clock. A uh, reminder that uh, we have a communion service midweek on Thursday at 10 o'clock, and this week we're having uh, stay outside and chat and have coffee after that service. As I said before, uh, Monday, I think I sent out the survey, which went out to everyone on email. Had 64 replies back, so that's really good. Thank you if you've done that already. Uh, if you haven't quite got round to it, uh, I'd like them all in by the end of the week. Uh, if you don't do emails and that kind of thing, then have a word with Susan Horner down there, and she's got some forms uh, for you to fill in, and then she will um, take the information from you and put it into the system so we can do it that way. Um, just to point up a couple of things coming up on 4th of October, this harvest, there'll be more details about then. And uh, the annual church meeting, I'm very muddled yesterday about this, but it, it is the 18th of October. The 18th of October it has been a number of dates, some of which I have told you about, but we've now settled on the 18th of October. Um, we are looking for at least one church warden, a number of PCC members, and a number of deanery synod members. Um, so it feels to me slightly remote, all this at the moment, but um, we do need to do the right thing in terms of the legal governance of the church. Uh, so you hold the vicar to account through the PCC that you elect. So we'll have the, uh, a, a meeting after our Sunday morning service on the 18th of October. But before then, if you'd like to consider being on the church uh, leadership group, the church council, then speak to me uh, or speak to Gwyneth or be prepared to be approached by someone else who might be headhunting you. Um, if the people at home could bear with me, I just need to say for those who are here this morning, when it comes to communion, we've now introduced an aisle. So we're going to do, do uh, coming forward in this way. So if this side would like to come forward first, uh, keeping two meters distance from people not in your support bubble, of course. Um, I'll be there with bread holding it to you and I'll put it in your hands. You can consume it there or you, some people, I think, prefer to carry it off to one side. So the circulation is come into the middle and then go around the back. So this group first, and then this group. No, Janet says she wants to go that way. Oh, Janet's an old timer. <laughs> all right, you think this is the better way? Okay, all right. So then Dennis, once, once uh, Carol and, and John have been up, then you're ready to come in here. Okay, and then when this group is inside, Janet will lead this group. Uh, but everybody's going around the back and then coming up either aisle to their seats. And the same applies when we leave too. Can you leave out, leave coming forward and going out that way rather than going backwards and banging into people? Is that okay? <laughs> Shall we stand if you're uh, here in church? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've just forgotten something. We wanted to do something new today and I've forgotten all about it. So shall we do the new thing? <laughs> yes. One of the things that came out of the survey was trying to engage both groups, the home group and the people in church groups. And so we thought we'd put in the Apostles' Creed, which I have forgotten. So I'm sorry. So <laughs> let's do that. Uh, I, I um, am very sorry. Uh, I thought I was doing so well. So that's on the sheet here. And we're trying to put it on the, the words on the screen for the people at home. Nick, are you, are you in 
Good, right, so it's just me that's out of sync. Okay. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Right, we're going off to the peace now. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's wish each other God's peace with a sign. As we, pray for our, as we prepare for our communion time, we're going to have the hymn, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide, number two on the sheet. with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, 
You made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven. We may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with James and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we break this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank mm -hmm. you.
draw near with faith. Remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Can someone bring me a mask, please? Right there. It's on the floor. Ah, oh, thank you. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ body of Christ the 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 body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let's pray together. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, all the benefits which you have given us, all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Let's stand together. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Dwell in peace love, and love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.